Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? Man, it is going well. It's a bit stressful. I'm actually leaving uh, next week. I'm flying out to Vegas on Sunday, so I... Uh trying to get everything put together, all my clients to a point where I can leave for a couple of days. But uh, other than that, doing pretty well. And I did want to mention that uh, if you're listening to this as a podcast or watching this on uh, on YouTube and you haven't joined the, uh, the Facebook group yet, I'd recommend checking it out. Uh, last week, for example, we had people pondering late payments, assistance with accessible sites, automation for holiday help, building proposals, using page builders, and uh, a ton, mon- uh, ton more. It's a great community full of uh, awesome people, and they're all ready to lend a hand if they can. Awesome people just like Lee Jackson, who we're going to get to here in just a second. But before we do, uh, we have a quick word from today's show sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by Termageddon. Termageddon is a privacy policy generator that automatically updates as the laws change so you can keep yourself protected from costly lawsuits. Termageddon partners with agencies by providing them a free set of policies for their own agency website. All that they ask in return is that if you like their service, you recommend it to your clients. But the best part is they'll give you a commission for every one of your referrals. Register at termageddon.com for your free agency account. That's termageddon.com. All right. Thank you, Termageddon, for sponsoring the show. So let's get straight to it. Today, we are talking to Mr. Lee Jackson from Agency Trailblazer and Angled Crown and the host of the event everyone in WordPress has been talking about, Agency Transformation Live. What's going on, Lee? That rolled off the tongue. Uh, Did you practice that? I did practice it once. (laughs) Just then? Uh, Yes. That's amazing. Well done. Round of applause. That was fantastic. Hey, I'm doing fine. How are you? Doing excellent. I'm excited to talk to you today about this event because when uh, you guys were all over social media uh, while the event was going on this last year, (laughs) uh, and I was super jealous the whole time. But I did want to do a quick callback to me and Matt actually came on your podcast, the Agency Trailblazer podcast, for episode 148 for reference, talking about uh, accountability partnerships. And uh, that topic has come up in the group lately. And I wanted to give a quick example of uh, something that worked out really well from from kind of what we talked about in that episode. So Matt's going on vacation next week. I was on vacation last week. The first day, I'm like driving to our destination, and I get a lead come in uh, as a voicemail, and this guy wants to talk about building a website and stuff. And I'm like, man, I, I got two choices. Either I can put him off for a week and probably lose the lead, or I can stop my vacation and go back into work, you know, when it just started. So instead, I just forwarded the voicemail to Matt, And Matt hopped on the phone with them, took care of them, got all the questions answered and everything we needed. And I'm actually, as soon as this podcast finishes, I'm going to meet the guy in person. So having a a partner like that's pretty awesome. For $1 million as well, I assume, Matt. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, That's fantastic. That was a real good fun episode, actually, because you guys were talking about how you just developed a relationship uh, as accountability buddies. First of all, just started you know, being in touch with each other and then it developed to you actually supporting each other, sending each other business, etc. So highly recommend a listen. And that was my first threesome as well, that episode. Nice. <laughs> Hot. I love to be part of your first. <laughs> All right. Well let's dig into uh let's dig into this live event. So what gave you the idea to host your own live event? And I really want to know how the hell did you pull it all off? Because it looks super stressful, all the behind the scenes you were posting beforehand, but then the event itself looked completely flawless thank you uh that's a massive question so i'm not really sure where to start but why did i start the event in the first place would simply be because there is so much noise there's so much content out there uh, and it's really hard for any business owner to not get distracted so when you are i bet there are people listening or watching this show who are also on Facebook at the same time and only half taking it in. And potentially by the end of this, they might get an idea of something they want to do in the future, which will get added to the list of other things that they want to do in the future. And then eventually it will become this big, overwhelming chunk of information, which will never happen or will happen in dribs and drabs. So I wanted to do a live event really to encourage people to get what I experience whenever I go to a live event, which is a very specific aha moment and 
a very specific plan on how I'm going to change my business, what my next step is. And every single time I've ever been to a live event, something's happened. And that's always been something new. For example, I launched the Agency Trailblazer community two years ago because I went to the Upreneur Summit. And whilst I was there, I heard the information I needed to put a plan together by the end of that two days. And then I went ahead and launched it. And it was the same for the second round of uh, the Upreneur Summit. I got to the end of that conference knowing exactly what I was going to do to launch the event the agency transformation live event but it kind of brought me to realize as being a part of all of these conferences meeting all these people getting new clients and suppliers and also learning how i needed to do something to get my next step that that's was missing in the agency space and uh, essentially we put together the five different pillars of transformation in any business but specifically targeted at agency owners so you might be right at the very beginning not even sure how to generate leads and who it is you serve right to the other end of the spectrum where you want to learn how to scale and i wanted to put together something that would allow everyone to get together in one space literally around the world and i didn't think the around the world bit would work but actually people came in from all around the world which blew my mind yeah. um to my hometown in wellingborough which still sounds nuts in my head and i keep giggling about it when i think about it but everyone came in from around the world and we got together um and the beginning of the conference really was all about where are you? What stage are you? And then only take away from this event the bits you need. So what we split everything out for the event itself um, into those pillars. So we said, all right, the next speaker is Troy Dean, and he's covering this, this, and this. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Martin Hutchbatch. He's going to cover this, et cetera, and so on and so, so, so forth. So people would still listen to what was going on and get great ideas. But really, we just kept hammering home that you need to go away at the end of this conference with a plan of the next few small achievable actions that you're going to do in your business that will create massive change. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, if you see some of the reviews as well that are coming in, it's phenomenal. And, and what people are talking about, it was an amazing time. To answer your question about the stress, my other business is in the events industry. So I get to see event organizers do massive conferences all around the world every single day. So although, yes, it was stressful, I just got to learn from all of those guys and watched how they did it and then essentially just copied and rinsed and repeat. So they've done all the hard work. Uh, and then I just organized everything the way I saw they do, used Airtables to manage all my, my data. Um, and uh, it kind of went flawlessly to everyone else. We knew the mistakes, and that's actually on a podcast sure. episode where I shared the mistakes we made as well as the things that went right. So if you remember, there's a link to that as well. Awesome. Yes. So, I mean, there is just something completely different about getting together in person, you know, because, you know, it was amazing. And what kind of made me jealous watching this is all these people that were there taking selfies together and stuff were all these people that I hang out with every day, pretty much in Facebook yeah. groups and stuff like that. And people that, you know, other than my immediate family in the other room, like these are the people I talk to more than anyone else, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and to have all those people in one place, like collaborating and together and stuff. It, it just looked awesome. It looked awesome enough that I've already bought tickets to next year. I, yeah, I was going to say How it, it cool made it that? really hard not to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> so we've, we've already started putting together a, a UK trip savings uh, savings fund. So we're about halfway there and got it paid for. Well, so. We've already sold shed loads of tickets to 2020, which again blows my mind. And we've got even more people from around the world coming now. So we've got loads of people from Australia coming as well, which is insane. Because awesome. I thought I was going to need to do an event in all the different countries. But people are actually... I think people want to just make the trip, make it a, a big focus and, and have a good time out. So, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. I'm more excited about place. coming to the UK than I would be if you were coming here. So, well, there you go. Works Get to meet me. the queen. Good mates. Exactly. No doubt. <laughs> so, you know, if, if, if any of you are part of the agency trailblazer um, community, the paid community that you have, um, you're uploading some of the videos and stuff from the actual event in there, which I've been watching uh, because I'm a member of that community. And they're, they're really awesome. And they're not all up yet, but I've seen quite a few that are, that are really great. And I know one of the biggest talked about moments was uh, Paul Lacey's talk. Yep. Uh, what, what do you think were the biggest moments that happened and uh, that people could look back on and, and you think really made a transformation for them? There were lots of transformation moments, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, one of the biggest ones, I think, for me uh, was seeing uh, Paul's story. So Paul shared a story, essentially, where um, he'd had a project which was uh, super stressful. It had all gone to 
kind of gone to pieces. The he was being disrespected and all of that sort of stuff. So it was just a, such a horrible moment. And then he received, um, and I won't give too much away, but he received this nice gift and uh, from some people that he'd supported in a charity many years ago. And there was just tears everywhere. All of us were crying. Um, but I think the pivotal mo- moment for us all was that it really helped capture the essence of the event. That this is about creating an agency, not so that we can all become Grant Cardone millionaires or Ty Lopez millionaires with girls, girls, girls and cars and big houses. That's not what we're interested in. We're actually interested in the people that you mentioned earlier who are in the room next door, which is your family. And we want to create um, agencies that will support our family to allow us to go on holiday and have an accountability buddy who can also take over um, a, a lead and arrange a meeting for you whilst you're away on holiday. We basically want to grow a community of agency owners that are happy and healthy and enjoy life and are not trying to aspire to these unachievable click funnel systems everywhere etc and paul's talk was very much uh, you know around his journey into creating that agency that he loves and getting rid of the horrible people uh, but also the kindness um, that he received when he'd given kindness out as well it was just phenomenal i was i was absolutely in tears um, at the end of that uh, that talk, which was awful, because then poor Peach and Ari, I had to then introduce her as the next talker, and I was just like, I can't say anything, <laughs> Peach and Ari, <laughs> and then I walked off. <laughs> so she managed to she managed to survive that one. But equally, there was lots of other moments which blew my mind. Was um, you know, I'm obviously worried a lot of the time about the speakers who were on stage. Like, oh, they've got to provide lots of value. We're going to have these amazing speakers on stage, which they did. Everyone I asked were either close friends or people I knew would want to go and see. Um, but uh, what blew my mind was seeing people in the actual the actual attendees all helping each other out. Because bearing in mind, this is a, an event all about the different stages. So you had some people who were struggling with their niche, having conversations with people who were working on scaling their business. So they'd already been there. They weren't even speakers, but they were sitting down together Together and having conversations, asking each other questions, making plans on pieces of paper without me facilitating any of that. I wasn't saying right now, sit down and do that. I was walking past people, hearing them have these conversations. So the power of the event wasn't just, uh, you know, a name behind the event or great big, spe- you know, great speakers on the stage, etc. It was actually the power of our amazing community, which we see every day, don't we, in the admin bar and, and other communities uh, on Facebook. But actually seeing it physically was, that for me was like, whoa. We, I need to keep doing this. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Like I mean, and it really goes to show, you know, the it is a community, you know, and mm. and with with similar goals and similar businesses, like we've been, you know, we've been where other people have been, and people are where we, uh, you know, aspire to be. And because exactly. I've found that uh, that in the the WordPress community as a whole, I mean, everybody's so helpful. Everybody's so like willing to 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 lend a hand when they can, and like. You know, you really don't see that in in too many communities. It's it's pretty amazing. Like mm. it, uh, it really makes you stop and and think. Like this is this is very cool. Like what's uh, what's being built here. I do know a lot of industries where I couldn't imagine them all getting in the same room, especially I don't know, say you know, sales industries, etc. There's a lot of competition, etc. Whereas right. we're and, you know, like okay. you you. I mean, okay, so Kyle and I, we have competition. Like at the end of every month, we uh, we go over our sales <laughs> totals and we see who's better, you know, that particular month. And like <laughs> competition like that is, I think, healthy. Um, oh, yeah. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you moving forward. But I think you're right. You know, like uh, a bunch of, of salespeople, like it's it's more like toxic competition yeah. in, in those, you know, it's, it's puffing out their feathers and, you know, like. Yeah. Look at how how uh, how awesome I am and my Mercedes and this and that. Where, like the the WordPress community is a it's a different community as a whole, and it's just totally. it's very very cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean I can even speak to that in like uh, where I worked before. It was a uh, franchise, a large franchise with six hundred something locations, and we would often like sub things out to different locations that had certain equipment or whatever. And there were some of them you'd go in there to pick up an order or something. They wouldn't let you in the back. They wouldn't tell you about, I mean, they were so guarded about everything. I mean, and you're yeah. part of like the same family, yeah, you know, it's the same business. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't want to go to the back and work out what they were doing. What did they have? I know <laughs> probably drugs. My guess well, is probably, drugs. Actually, it's probably that. Or yeah, no drugs. doubt. Yeah, there's very tight margins on print. So, yeah, right. Okay. You, you got more uh, <laughs> ROI on on heroin and cocaine. <laughs> well, I think there's like this natural 
arc that most agencies go through, you know, and I, and I can almost visualize this arc now because, because of people like you who are out there sharing these stories and talking about the experiences they've had. And, you know, you know, when you start out your business or when you're, when you're able to first go full time with your business, you're at such a high and so excited about everything. Uh, and every day is a great day. Mm -hmm. And eventually you're just, you can't maintain that level forever. It's just not feasible to stay there, you know, that high above everything. Uh, and, the, and the problem is, is as some people kind of go through that arc, they they crash through where they should be and they hit the, they hit the ground, you know, they hit the floor. And I think part of the thing about this community and a and a an event like this is it helps you really identify some of those things, some of those warning signs, some things you could be doing or some ways to structure your agency that kind of keep you from coming down too hard, you know? Yeah. What I like, I think what I like as well is that uh, like Matt was saying, people have had experiences that you have not yet have or are yet to have. So you can learn from those experiences. And I mentioned like the Grant Cardones of the world and that who are selling the systems that will make you millions of pounds. I mean, I'm sure there are systems out there that are great, but equally, yeah, yeah, uh, make you millions. But, um, you know, the, the, for the people, podcast listeners, we were doing, uh, pod, this is podcast quotes from now, in podcast <laughs> quotes, millions of dollars. Um, but I'm sure some of these systems can work, et cetera, but every business is different. And if I can have a conversation with Kyle when it comes to a problem I'm having that I know Kyle's had some experience of and get, you know, your opinion, that's going to be worth, worth way more to me uh, than one of these paid courses where I'm actually, I've got to buy the next level up to get access to whatever else it is. So the person who's going to make the millions i feel like are these gurus as opposed to how we're all able to help each other uh, through a community yeah anyway preach preach over preach no preach. I, I did see a post the other day i forget where it was but somebody was asking like who are your favorite gurus and i just thought and i don't even like that word like i was afraid to look <laughs> in the comments who came in there because i'm like I think there's a lot of people like you uh, that I extremely look up to and, and have gained so much knowledge from, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to call you a guru because it doesn't sound right. You're it's like a almost friend, insulting, you like, know, You're, you, you would call me hot tamale. Yeah, that for sure. The hot tamales you look up to and that would be me. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. I'm, I'm down with that. All right. <laughs> Every to, time uh, someone says guru, I just think of the, uh, that film with uh, the guy from, I can't even say that, can I? Austin Powers. What was the guy's name? Anyway, the guy who played Austin Powers, he was in a film called The Guru. You got to watch it. Nice. I'll have okay. to check that out. Link Moving in the show notes. Link in, if you remember. <laughs> Affiliate link. So uh, <laughs> you, we've already kind of talked right. about that you're going to have the event next year. So uh -huh. I know you've, you've already made some plans. There's already some speakers announced for next year. What do we have in store to look forward to uh, when we make the trip across the pond next year? Awesome. Fireworks. Yes. Um, no, I'm joking. There's no I don't think your there. church will like that. I don't think they will uh, at all. Well, I don't know. We can get fake ones. But anyway, um, all right. So we've already got some speakers lined up already, which is great. Um, we've got, uh, in fact, our sponsors for this particular episode, Termageddon, both um, Hal and uh, his partner are coming over. That's the founders are coming over, and they're going to be doing a talk on stage, which is phenomenal, both of them together. So that's a, a new, a unique, having a couple on stage. Um, but we're going to continue that kind of flow of these are the five stages of transformation. If you were here last year, how, how did you do? What stage are you on now, and how can we help you? But equally for anyone who's new, the five pillars can continue to help them. So we'll have a two-day conference based on that. So there'll be there'll be content. We're going to do a little bit of extras like speed networking and a few other things that we got some feedback where people wanted to learn more of other people in the room. And then we are throwing in a third day, which is our implementation day. So for a lot of people who say, "All right, I've got, I know what my three or four things." three or four achievable things are going to be that I need to do. But then you jump in the car and you drive home and you've got to catch up with the family because you've been away for two days or three nights if you manage to get that one and uh, you know have a few beers on the last night because I know a lot of people did that. Um, so you've got to kind of make up for this loss in time and it's a week later before you come back to your notes and start to do things. So we have the third day, which is going to be predominantly implementation. So for the people who are there on the third day who want to stay on, they're going to be working out where they're at and then start to implement specific actions in those categories and we're going to split out into around five areas within the venue and we'll have a couple of leaders for each and every one of the pillars and then people can get together we'll have a couple of talks again um, and some activities but there will be a lot of implementation jumping on the wi-fi getting up laptops open etc and workshopping some of these things out as well so for example if someone was like holy moly my social is awful and i've not been putting my message out there on social media then they're going to go ahead and go over to the platform area and work with the people there 
there to start to implement and to have a checklist of things they're going to go ahead and do when they get home so that they don't lose that momentum. So I imagine some of the people that are that are up there speaking are going to be there during that third day, like literally Absolutely. walking around helping people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, you can. Uh, there, there's still some early bird tickets left. Is that right? That's right. Ten left as of this recording. I can't guarantee there'll be that many left at the end of this. So and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're, no, we're gonna. FOMO. I imagine Typical they'll be marketing gone. technique. Ugh. I, I imagine they'll be gone pretty quick. You can get to them by going to the adminbar.com forward slash ATL for agency transformation live, not for Atlanta. Don't save do two hundred. Save two hundred quid, and we're having to do this because it's not a marketing technique, but we are in my church. We've got a specific number of people that we could fit in there, and a specific target of number of people we want to get in the room. So we're having to just do staged prices as opposed to just doing a date cutoff. So we can sell that many tickets at this price, and then unfortunately we have to increase the tickets a bit more. And over time, we've got a year to sell the tickets, obviously. So three hundred twenty-two days, I think, as of recording. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Three hundred twenty-two days, eighteen hours, thirty-five minutes and 55 seconds yeah i feel like that's just too long to wait can you do a mini one in between that we, we are i've not announced the dates yet but we're doing a mini one day mastermind here in the uk as well uh, nice. and it's, if i can nail the model it will be something that we go on tour with really um yeah, so it'll be something that we do. If we can get, get the program right so that it, the people get the result they need to out of this one-day mastermind session, mm -hmm. um, then it's something we'll probably then go ahead and do in the States as well um, and just take take it on tour. Well, come on to Granberry. Maybe Australia, but the idea of like 24 hours flight really puts me off Australia. Yeah, yeah me too. Rough. Which is why I have massive respect for all the Australians who've booked tickets for ATL. No doubt. Well, you know, a lot of us are, are interested in this event and learning from this event because it serves our own business. But mm -hmm. you're putting on this event because it serves your niche that you serve through your business. You know, so I'm thinking about, you know, this was, uh, I imagine, pretty successful for your business. It probably helped raise your profile. It probably did a lot of great things for the Lee Jackson brand, the Angled Crown brand, the agency Trailblazer brand. You know, so how can we kind of take some of these things and use them for our own business? So I was thinking of ideas like maybe holding some kind of local seminar if you work with local businesses or stuff. Um, you know, do you have any ideas on how we can use kind of this model and maybe even on a smaller scale, but put on something like this for our own niche? Absolutely. So um, if you think of... All right. So most businesses will have a, a target audience. That could be a type of, of client. So it's I, I work with business owners who are stressed out, blah, 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 right through to I work with accountants or whatever the heck it is. Um, it's not hard for you to be able to put some sort of event together. I mean, the lowest risk is some sort of online um, summit that you can start off with if you're worried about locations and costs, et cetera. Um, obviously, another lower risk method is what we've all done. You guys have got the admin bar. I've got the podcast, et cetera, that I've run for several years. And those sorts of things help you build an audience. But definitely as a pro profile raiser, a significant profile raiser, putting on a live event um, for my for the niche niche, whatever however you say it, that that I'm in, which is agency owners, graphic designers, web designers, that absolutely skyrocketed uh, my personal brand. So people take me a lot more seriously than oh, it's just that guy with a podcast. Actually, this is that guy who runs that event that everybody's talking about. So it's the guru. That, Exactly, it made the silly easy. but it makes a massive difference, and it helps. It allows me to help more people, and yes, obviously, we'll we'll generate leads. I'm sure at some point, who will want you know, with people who will want to align themselves with my journey. The diff the thing is that we're all doing here is we're putting ourselves out there. Um, so if you can put yourself out there and put together some sort of event for your niche, that does help raise your profile, but it also allows you to get people in your industry together to get that networking element of things. Perhaps you can then also build off a, a Facebook community off of the back of that as well and start to be one of the facilitators someone who gets your industry together um, who can network with each other but also work with you if you think of my other business event engine where i work with event organizers around the world that's exactly what they're doing they are getting people in specific niches together um, for them to network and learn and all of that good stuff so if you can facilitate that you will become an, a, a community lead or a community owner you'll become that thought leader you will become uh, you know that guru that that uh, etc to actually 
physically do event is not complicated. Um, if you can start off small, you can do a deal like I did with a local church. Instead of having a massive event in your big city at the convention center, why don't you save yourself a whole load of money and a whole load of traveling by doing it locally um, in a big venue that you can, maybe a local church, et cetera, um, get sponsors involved. That's how I was able to pull this off was to get sponsors involved because I would not really have been able to pay for all of this with ticket sales alone. Um, so we had lots of sponsors involved to allow us to actually buy all the equipment that we needed, et cetera pay for all of our campaigns and all that sort of stuff so we we contacted sponsors and and they invested in us um, and then we did this as, as a big event however there's nothing stopping you getting a small local church doing some sort of low cost to free event getting some volunteers in to speak um, and uh, doing it at low cost and just getting someone with a really good camera to take a whole load of pictures because that's the platform for you to then build upon mm -hmm. if you see all the pictures that tristan and the team look uh, took that managed to capture the awesomeness of the event that we had and probably made it look even more awesome than it was. I don't know. I was there, but I was running around like a blue ass fly. Um, everyone said it was good though, but you know, <clears throat> you can build on that now. So like right now I'm on a podcast I'm building uh, on last year to get more exposure to our plans, etc. So if you can start off with something small and local for your niche, get good pictures and then continue to build and build on that as well. Yeah, I, I was even thinking just with like the local chamber of commerce, you know, the, the local chamber of commerce that I'm a part of, uh, they have a meeting room where they, you know, put meetings and stuff on. I'm almost positive that they would just uh, let you put something like that together for other chamber members. Boom, you know, you're done for right the there. Members, or you could advertise it as a, so for example, Tristan um, he, over here uh, in the UK puts on social media events, which are free or ridiculously low cost at local community centers. And he'll have anything from 10 to 50 local businesses, not necessarily paying loads of money to be at the event, but from that he is building his brand locally with these types of businesses that he helps he's able to look after their social media and all of the other stuff that happens as a result of that so he's consistently doing this method where he's launching low-cost events adding massive value to his niche in the community and then building on that yeah, and you think about it, I mean, it's another advertising avenue for you. And you think about what kind of return you're going to get if, if you're, you know, a local web designer like I am, and I throw out a bunch of Facebook ads, like it's probably not going to be real convincing to people, maybe I'll get lucky and somebody will click on it. Uh, you know, or if I put an ad, I don't know, put a billboard up or something like some of my competitors in town here do. I mean, it's probably okay. But imagine how much more of an impact you would make from like a marketing perspective, if you were out there doing this, holding some kind of event, really teaching people something that they found useful. I mean, that's, you know, no advertising dollars on a print ad or digital ad online is going to, is going to pay for that kind of exposure, you know? I think though the important thing as well is the message, isn't it? So with ATL, there's distinct message, which is work out where you are on this track. You know, are you at stage one or are you at stage five? Um, and then take action. So if you were just going to do a free local WordPress admin overview, <laughs> then no one's going to show up for that because it sounds right. boring as hell. But if you've got a very specific, like here is how to get more appointments for your painting and decorating business. We're putting on this event for painters and decorators to show them how to use the World Wide Web um, to get books solid or whatever that phrase is. Um, you're going to get a lot more traction from that. No billboards needed. The riches are in the niches. Niches, niches, niches. <laughs> we say niche, which sounds uh -huh. like quiche. Because you don't say kitsch, do you? I'm going to have a kitsch. I have a quiche. Do you have quiches no. over there? We yeah. do, but yeah. not not much in Texas. All right. How about gif or jif? Which one? I go with gif. gif. I go gif. All right. Unanimous. It is solved. Thank yeah. you, internet. Jif just sounds not cool. Sounds bad. <laughs> no doubt. Sounds like, like an illness. Well, I'm, I'm super excited about being there for next year. I'm bringing my wife along, leaving the kids at home. We're making a whole uh, little mini wow. vacation out of it. I think awesome. we're going to stay stay for the event and then stay for probably another week or so and, and do a little traveling in Europe. Fantastic. So I'm excited about that. So definitely, if, if anybody's interested, uh, the early bird tickets are going to save you some money if there's any left. So I would head over to the adminbar.com forward slash ATL and see if there are any left uh, when you're listening to this. Lee, I greatly appreciate you jumping on the show and dropping knowledge as always. Is there anything you'd like to add before we get out of here today? No, just thank you. And I'm loving the camp, mate. 
Appreciate it, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> that was wise, wasn't it? Uh, there was a pearl of wisdom there. there All right, h- here's a pearl of wisdom, just in case someone was expecting one. Feel the fear and do it anyway is a motto of my life. And I was absolutely petrified of running this event and bricking it like crazy. Bricking it is a UK phrase of S I S H I T T I N G ing yourself. Um, <laughs> I was very, very scared, but I felt the fear and did it anyway, and good stuff have happened to the extent that Kyle is booking tickets and bringing his wife over. That that blows my mind. It's uh, crazy, so, isn't it? Feel the fear, do it anyway, guys. Heck no yeah. doubt. Well, Matt, you got anything to add for us today before we head out? No, I think we, uh, we're pretty pretty good to uh, just wrap it up. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Coming in for the landing. All right. Well, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share our content, subscribe to our channel, or use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support, support the show. Sure. That's all for now. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I was late because I'm rend- it was rendering and I couldn't get anything. Everything was crashing. I was like, ah.